Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for waking us up this morning. You started us on our ways. Despite pain, despite difficulty, despite rejection. But we are still here. Father God, I pray for all my sisters here tonight. Even those who are not able to make it. I pray for healing. I pray for restoration of mind, body, soul, and spirit. Father God, speak to our hearts, speak to our ears, speak to our spirit. Because there's a lot of junk that we carry that we shouldn't even be carrying them because you said lay down your burdens, our burdens, and you'll make them light. And sometimes rejection, Father God, is a strong subject. Rejection, Lord God, can keep us from living in our purpose. And Lord God, you have planned for us, planned for us to have a hope and a future. But sometimes the past, pain, hurt, and disappointment make us afraid of moving forward. Father God, I thank you because you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of sound mind. Allow this study to be a blessing to me, to each and every one of us here today. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. So glad to see you guys. We coming down to the summer um, in a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to be traveling. I know people are traveling. So we, after our brunch on Sunday, um, for those of you who can make it, um, we'll take a couple of weeks break because there's going to be traveling. Um, but I'll make sure that I'll share encouragement with you guys. So our topic today is called Rejection, Healing a Wounded Heart. Um, I don't even need to ask by show of hands how many people feel like they've been rejected. And all of our hands should be up, whether I can see them or not. Um, It's something that we deal with daily. Um, Something that we've experienced in the past. And most likely, it's something that we're going to continue to experience is rejection. But we got to see rejection sometimes not as that we're not worth something. But it's a way for us to turn toward God. There's a different way to handle um, rejection. And we're going to talk about it, hopefully, through the study. I don't have a lot of slides for the study, but we have, we're going to have a big conversation about the study. Um, This is the passage um, that I would like to share with you guys. I want to really dive down um, into something deeper. Okay. Because I think, um, The message put it very nice and simple in a way for us to understand. All right. Give me one minute. I'm pulling it up on my phone so I can read all of it. And this some really talk about who we are. It's a sum of David. How God created us to be. And this is um, David talking. He says, God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassurance presence coming and going. This is too much. Too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit? To be out of your sight? 
If I climb to the sky, you are there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on the Mount Morning's wings too far from Western Horizon, you'll find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. Okay, I'm gonna mute you. Hold on, give me a minute. Okay. Hold on. If you can mute yourself. All right. Let me find out. Because I want everybody to. Okay. All right. Now, it's a fact. Darkness isn't dark to you. Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. Oh, yes. You shaped me first, inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. Your breath taken. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made. Bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them or any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Oh, let me rise in the morning and live always with you. And please, God, do away with wickedness for good. And you murderers out of here, all the men and women who belittle God, who belittle you, God infatuated with cheap God imitation. See how I hate those who hate you, God. See how I loathe all this godless arrogance. I hate it with pure unadulterated hatred. Your enemies are my enemies. Investigate my life, O oh God. Find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether I've done anything wrong. Then guide me to the road of eternal life. That was Psalm 139. Now, We're talking about rejection. What is rejection? What is the root cause of rejection? So basically, rejection is refusing to accept or consider someone. We've been rejected. You've rejected people. And we all have. Now, to be rejected is to be cast aside, cast off, cast away, to be thrown away as having no value. Okay? We kind of, I know it says like cast aside, cast off, cast away. But sometimes we can reject somebody just by the way we treat them. Okay? Okay? This is what we do. We reject people. We don't say it out loud. We don't tell them you're going to cast aside. We just start to exclude them. When something is going on, like let's say for a group of friends, 
We do that to family members when something is going on. We just do it hush hush. We don't tell people about it. And you can do something and forgot to invite somebody. But you doing it with the with the motive that you just don't want them to know. Okay? So having feeling rejected this thing can follow you all through your adulthood and in the slide as i I put we experience rejection from our earliest years and it start as a child when we begin you know begin to be deprived of having someone who loves us unconditionally you can have parents you can have Parents that give you things, they're just material things. But having unconditional love, maybe some of us didn't experience it. And we carry this thing to adulthood. And I always said hurt people, hurt people. Because that's what we know. We teach what we know. Sometimes we reproduce it, even in our kids. We reject our kids not even knowing. We give them everything that we need to give them, all the material things. But as far as like coming down to their level and say, you know, I love you. I appreciate you. And sometimes, you know, in the Haitian culture, a lot of Haitian parents, they did not grow up with love. I'm not, well, with affection, like display of love. Not that their parents didn't love them, but they grew up. If you do something bad, you get punished. But if you do something good, sometimes you don't even hear the word good job because they feel like if they tell you good job, you're going to take it bad and they don't want you to get like prideful. So what they do, they try to discipline you, but yet they don't show you this unconditional love they don't sit down and tell you daughter son i love you and if you experience that as a child from your parents that's a great thing because a lot of us grow up without not having that so you experience rejection when someone who regards you know you're not significant you you don't feel welcome. You probably feel like you are the black sheep of the family. And realizing that you are being rejected is gonna skew your view. What do you, what do I mean by that? It's gonna skew your view of yourself first. You're gonna feel like you have low self esteem, self worth. We did a study on self-worth in the past. And you grow with that. And you don't get rid of it. But right now, as grown women, adults, we need to start shedding those things. We need to acknowledge them. We need to recognize them. And then we need to move forward. This is what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. It says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So even David said, my mother and my father might forsake me. But God will never leave me. So how do we get rid of this thing that's, you know, hitting us inside? This thing called rejection, right? And sometimes you can even feel rejected by God. Does that mean that God reject us? No. When we're living in a life of sin, we're going to get to the point where we feel like we are being rejected. We just read that God will never leave you nor forsake you. 
do not be afraid. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love anybody else. Let me tell you, it's a, you are a danger when you don't love yourself. Because you said, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't, I mean, there's certain things about ourselves we don't, we might not like, even though we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's certain things about my, my physical appearance I don't like. There's certain bad habits that I have, I hate them. But do I hate myself? No. The core me, I love me. Because if I don't love me, I cannot love anybody else. Right? Even Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes those vicious cycle of rejection will prevent you from loving God and loving yourself. Right? What do we need to know about God? Number one, we need to know God's character, right? God is love, right? It says so in John 4, verse 8, Jeremiah 31 and 3, okay? God, we need to know the heart of God, right? So the character of God, God is love. No matter what, he's love. His heart right he adopt us into his family this is what he says in Ephesians he call us sons and daughters we need to know God's plan for us plan for us to prosper to have a hope and a future but the ultimate plan we found it in John 3 17 plan for salvation right we always call John, John 3.16. But go into John 3.17. And we need to know God's purpose. Romans 5, verse 3 to 5. All right? Now, let's continue. Remember, I said that last time when we talk about loneliness. Rejection breeds rejection. Feeling alone breed feeling alone. It's a vicious cycle. Negative behavior, rejection, worthlessness, self-hate. And the cycle just continue and continue. And this is what we need to be aware of. All right? So, let's move to the next slide. Now, this is how we can begin to move forward. Because there's the way, like, our thinking, the way we think, what we believe. We can have the wrong belief. You can say to yourself, well, because I'm being rejected, I feel so unloved, so insignificant, so unwanted. You say all these things about yourself. My life is worth nothing because I'm being rejected. But sometimes do you understand that men's rejection, God can try to get you out of situation, out of a circle, and you don't listen. He might use. Other people might start to reject you. And God's going to use that for his purpose because he said all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Right? So all the things going to work out in your favor. This is how you can change your thinking. Well, I don't like being rejected. But me being rejected has nothing to do with my worth. Me being rejected has nothing to do with my self-esteem. Whether other people choose to reject me or not, I know that God accepts me. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Right? 
This is what it says in Isaiah 42, verse 16. It says, I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Okay? Isaiah 42, 16. So when you are feeling, you know, feeling being rejected, just pray to God. That part of the rejection is going to be part of your transformation. All right? You are not just anybody. You are purchased with a high price, and that is the blood of Christ who died for you. Now, we need to focus on the facts and not the feelings. Sometimes we let our feelings cloud ourselves, right? And therapy, we call that adaptive thinking strategies. The things that you believe about yourself, you can do like a cost analysis. Are they true? The things that I'm believing about myself? Am I real that person? The things that I say to myself, would I say the same thing to a friend or family member? Never. Right? So our feelings sometimes can be a stumble, stumbling block. God created us with feelings. But he also calls us to have self-control. And when you have self-control, it's like you have no control over your feelings. Right? Now, we need to go back in the past sometimes. You don't live there. But you need to go back in the past. So when you go back to the past, what are you doing? You are admitting the rejection of the past and you acknowledge its pain. People who suffer from PTSD, one of the form of therapy that they do with them, they make them relieve the experience that caused them to have the traumatic um, event. The reason why they do that, the more you face it, the less painful it becomes. So now you don't go live in the past. But you acknowledge the pain. If you don't acknowledge the pain, you cannot begin the healing process. For example, if I have a headache, I'm somebody who suffers from migraine. Last night I had a bad migraine. I thought I was going to die, literally. The last time I had a pain that much, that was so bad, was I think September last year. And I ended up spending like how many days in the hospital? Like three days. Because they thought that I had a, a stroke which I did not praise God for that. But when you acknowledge the pain, you can say, you know what? I'm going to take something for the pain. When I felt the headache coming, so what I did, I took some medication because I acknowledged there was pain. And then when I took the medication, it wasn't even like dulling the pain. What I did, I left everything that I was doing, put my mask on, went to my room, covered my head, and lay down and didn't move until I woke up this morning. Because I admit that I was in pain, I acknowledge it so I could take something for it, right? Sometimes you need to ask God to bring to mind every rejection. And like I said to you, it starts from your childhood to the present. And then consider the circumstances of each situation. Was it really that your parents didn't love you? Or maybe they didn't know how to show it. Did they provide for you? Did they keep you from danger? Because sometimes we living in the, in the, in, in the USA, we forget our own culture, right? We take things out of cultural context. In the um, Indian culture, I have an elder who she is a couple, and I ask her, how did you guys meet? 
how did you guys fall in love? And she looked at me weird. She's like, what do you mean, fall in love? She said, ever since I was born, my parents and his parents raised us up for each other. And I'm like, what? She's like, I didn't even know him. She never met him. But the parents had anything to do with the arrangement. And she said, primarily her dad. And she's from like the higher class. Because I know in India they have a class system. She is from like the higher class system. Like, you know, doctors, lawyers, educated people from India. Her dad was a doctor and everything like that. And she said, she said, my mom, without my dad knowing, had to go consult a guru for the guru to tell us, okay, I'm going to put my daughter in this marriage. Is this man kind? And she said she married her husband. They, he's, she's 79, 79 he's 83. They, they have no children because she tried to conceive and it didn't happen. She had so many miscarriages. But you can tell they love each other. And he said, this is what's wrong with you Americans. You always put your feelings forward. You don't consider the facts. And I was like, you know what? It's not culturally for me, but what she says makes sense. Even in the Bible, it tells husband loves your wife. It doesn't say women love men. So sometimes you go back to your childhood, to the present, and then you consider the circumstances of each situation, not with feelings, but with facts. That's why I always advise people, when you are too angry, too happy, even not me, but like study show, do not make big decision when you are too happy, too angry, feel lonely because you're going to regret it. Even going grocery shopping. When you go grocery shopping, you need to be neutral. Make sure you're not too full or too hungry. Because if you're too hungry, you're going to go in the store and buy things you don't even need. You're too full, you go in there and buy things and don't buy enough of the things that you need. We need to stop making decisions on our feelings and look at the facts. <laughs> Somebody said, say it again. We need to stop making decisions based on our feelings, but consider the facts of every situation. Then after you do that, you relate the pain to God. Not only the pain, but the persons involved and causing the pain. What do I mean by that? Give it to God. Ask God to heal the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual damage caused by the painful experience of rejection. Why do I put physical? Rejection breeds bitterness, self-hate. And bitterness, we did that before, causes a lot of sickness in our bodies, right? So there's physical pain as a result. There's emotional pain. And also, there's spiritual pain. I don't know about you, but I'm somebody who've been talked about, abused, mistreated even by church folks and that can affect my spiritual being and when I feel like I want to give up I just realize based on the facts I'm dealing with human beings it's not about me so I don't take it personal now, I don't just let it roll on my back. I'm human. It would affect me. But I try not to sit 
on it and let that grow. Because once that bitterness grow inside of you, you cannot, and that's, I'm not saying you cannot, but it's going to take a lot to get it out. You nip it in the bud. Now, after you do that, you claim God's acceptance and unconditional love for you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. 17, he did not come to the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved, right? So now you claim your acceptance and unconditional love. We just read that in Psalm 139. This is a part that I love. It says, you know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something like an open book. You watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. What a wonderful passage. What a wonderful passage. I thank you, high God, your breathtaking body and soul. I am marvelously made. Claim God's acceptance and unconditional love for you. Then after you do that, you confess God's love for you in the various way he has shown you his love. How does he show you his love? He died for you. We were on our way to hell, believe it or not. Because he died for us, he reconciled us back to God. Now that we have access to his throne. We have access to heaven. Right? Notice that what I'm putting there is everything has to do with God. This is our first love. Because only God has the ability to change heart, to change soul, to change spirit. Choose to forgive those who rejected you. You rejected God. I rejected God in the past, but he forgave me, right? This is what it says in Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Well, Sky, you don't know what she did to me. You don't know the stuff that she talked about me. Forgive. Don't drink the poison and thinking that the other person's going to die. Because when you don't forgive, this is what happened. You drinking poison and expecting the offender to die. Forgiving somebody doesn't mean that you minimize the offense. Forgiving somebody doesn't mean that reconciliation. To reconcile, the person needs to repent. You can forgive somebody even if they're dead. You know that. There's a lot of us who are carrying burdens from people who's been long gone. But yet, we behind, we can't move forward because of a word that somebody said. And I need to be delivered <laughs> myself. There's something that I don't eat. I don't eat chicken feet. And I used to love chicken feet growing up. Now the thought of it, gross me out all because when I was younger when somebody saw me eating chicken feet sucking on the bone and told me look at you why are you eating those chicken feet your feet are so skinny it's like you're eating your own feet your own legs and I was so skinny I had like skinny legs and every time I see it I feel like I'm eating my own leg weird right I must have been like 
eight. I'm 40 something. And I still didn't let go of that. This person is dead, long gone. So choose to forgive those who rejected you. It could be family members. It could be your, your parents. It could be anybody, past or present. Now consider all the hurt and anger you feel over your rejection. You have to consider the, the hurt. You have to acknowledge the pain. This is why I said earlier, if you don't acknowledge the pain, you're not going to treat the pain. Don't push it under the carpet and act like you're so strong. It didn't bother me none. Yes, it did. you acting so because something in your past is determined who you are today. Now, count the cost of withholding forgiveness. The cost is you will die little by little. So don't withhold it. Don't hold it. Let it go. Commit to forgive those who rejected you. Just as Christ forgave those who rejected him. Including you. Let me give you some verses. First Peter four verse 12 says, do not be surprised as a painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Expect future rejection. We live in a fallen world. We're living with fallen people. We all have sin and fall short of the glory. You've been rejected and you also rejected people. Empty yourself. Get rid of the pride. Get away from it. Run from it. Empathize. You know what we lack? We sympathize, but we don't empathize. Like I said earlier, hurt people hurt people. When you sympathize with somebody, you feel sorry for them. But when you empathize with somebody, you put yourself in their shoes. Right? If you know how it feels to be rejected, why are you rejecting somebody else? Come on, let's talk about it. Why are you rejecting somebody else knowing that you feel rejected? Sometimes you take gossip from other people. They said, oh, so-and-so is so bad. Don't stay away from that person. You don't even give yourself a chance to go n to get to know that person because of something somebody else said. You just automatically dismiss them. Just like you're dismissing them, somebody's dismissing you the same way. Wouldn't you want somebody to get to know you first before they start judging you? Think about it. Sometimes we give the wrong vibe. Stop sympathizing with people and start empathizing with them. Put yourself in their shoes. That's why it says bear with each other and forgive one another. It doesn't say feel sorry for each other. If anyone has grievance against someone, it says forgive. Now, in the passage, did it say that the person has to come and ask for your forgiveness? No. You forgive whether they ask for it or not. I know it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do to let go of pain and hurt and rejection. But you want to be free. We want you want to feel light. 
you want to be able to sleep at night. Forgive. Now, I didn't say forget. We don't have the ability to forget because we're not God. God forgive. He forgives our sin and he forgets our sin. He said he remembers them no more. Forgiving doesn't mean that you're going to forget what the person did. You know you're forgiven when you remember the offense. It doesn't hurt you as bad as it used to. This is when you know you forgive. If every time you remember the offense, you feel the same way, you feel anger, you feel rage, just thinking about it or just you start to cry, you're not there yet. But when you focus on the facts and your feelings, it's not taking over. This is when you know you're in the process of forgiving. My beautiful sisters, I encourage each and every one of you to cultivate forgiveness. You won't be able to do it yourself because it's not an easy thing to do. But ask God, and it says so in, in Matthew chapter 7, forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right? If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. You want to end the circle of rejection? Start by praying. Start by reading your word. Start by asking God to help you. In Psalm 119 verse 71, I want the reason why I'm saying that because I want you to think and also acknowledge and give God's thing for what you've learned through your rejection. The the verse says, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Cause sometimes without affliction, you're not gonna learn. When God is trying to tell you, get out of there. Stop hanging with so-and-so. You don't listen because you want to fit in. I want to fit in. I want to be with the cool kids. Until one of the cool kids start casting you aside. And then you, re you realize that you were on your way to destruction. And for God to save you, he had to afflict you. Right? Hebrews 3.13. Encourage one another daily. This is what I'm doing now. I'm still dealing with my own bout of rejection. But does it hurt the way it hurt five years ago? No. A month ago? No. Not even this morning. Because I'm learning to let go. And I'm relying on God to help me to let go of the pain of the rejection. And when you think you can't do it by yourself, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. Through Christ, who gives me strength. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We lay all our burdens, all our rejection, all our pain all our sorrow, all our sense of worthlessness, all our sense of low self-esteem. We lay them down and we take your love 
your joy, your peace, that we are wonderfully made. We are awesome wonders. Father God, we have value. We have worth. We are heir to your throne. We have children of the most high God. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen people. Father God, we thank you like that we can walk with our heads straight, with our shoulders back. Because what they try to do to us, the plan that the enemy forged against us, we thank you because none of them prospered. If we can still be here, it's because you were there standing for us. We thank you because you took all those flesh, all those weapons, all those arrows, all those things that people talked about us, all those gossip. You took them. And Lord God, you turned them into blessings. Because as men curse, Father God, you bless. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, because you are a God who love, a God who bless, a God who protect, a God who is near the brokenhearted, a God who can restore. Thank you, Lord God, for this study. Thank you, Lord God, for our sisters on this line. Thank you for those who's going to hear the, stu the study and their lives going to change because not of me, but because of your words. Father God, we continue to stand on your promises. We ask you of God to bless, protect, heal, restore. And we ask all these things, not because we are worthy, but we ask them in Jesus' name to hand be the glory and the honor both now and forever and ever and ever amen may god bless you may god keep you may his face shine upon you may he restores you that he bring back everything that the enemy has stolen and bring it back sevenfold including your joy amen 